Mike here with GearsOfBiz.com. We are with Travis Ozier of Verizon Wireless, and we're here to demo the brand new line of 4G products on the LTE network of Verizon Wireless. Thank you. So what we have as far as the four devices that we're coming out with, we've got an LG Revolution, Samsung 4G smartphone, we have Motorola Bionic, and HTC Thunderbolt. So going over the devices as a whole, what you get with these is the Android 2.2 operating system. So you're going to get the, the standard operating system through MR. They will be upgradable to the next generation. Um, they've all got a 1 gigahertz processor in them. Now, the Motorola has the dual core 1 gigahertz processor, but they all have at a minimum 1 gigahertz processor. As far as the embedded RAM on there, you've got 512 on the RAM for the devices. Um, they can all do mobile hotspot. Definitely a good feature for people as far as the LTE. So it is a 4G mobile hotspot that can hook up to eight different devices all at once. So you're not just going to get the tr traditional 3G connection that you have on there, you've got 4G with the connection of LTE. So a lot of people ask, is it going to be slower, is it going to be faster, is it going to be the same? No, it's the real deal. It's the LTE network that we have on all of our devices. It's not like we drove a truck in here just to get a connection. But one thing that we did do is to say, you know what, you have to try it to believe it. So as far as all of them are concerned, 4.3 inch displays, they all have front facing and rear facing cameras. The only thing is that the three devices between Samsung, Motorola, and HTC, they've got 1.3 megapixel cameras on the front. The back of these devices have an 8 megapixel camera. So if we want to take a look at the cameras on the back of each of these devices. Like I had said before, 8 megapixel dual flash. You've got an 8 megapixel with the dual flash on this, 8 megapixel on the Samsung and then a 5 megapixel with a single LED flash on the LG. Uh, very nice about most of these devices is having the components to be doing HDMI out. They will all shoot video at 720p, but you'll be able to do HDMI output on the devices as well. So definitely nice as far as content when you're playing them. So now why would I choose, let's say, they're all, they're all pretty close to the same, except for the Bionic. Why would I choose one over the other? Why would I choose HTC over the LG? Just because I like LG or I like HTC or is there a benefit to one or the other? Well, as far as the specs, as far as performance getting in from point A to point B, there's not going to be a difference. Uh, the more I talk to people, the more it does come down to personal preference. For example, having Sense UI, a lot of people are familiar with Sense UI nowadays. Yeah. Having that option on there plus HTC has actually improved the Sense UI, the small little features, things where I can actually rearrange my home screens. People like that. People trust the name as far as HTC is concerned. Uh, when you go to Samsung, people who are interested in Samsung, for myself, I like having a Super AMOLED screen. Now we've got the next generation of Super AMOLED Plus. So I do like that. And as far as the LG, LG is taking a step up. What I do like is that they include the 512 of RAM. Usually they were middle of the road as far as Android was concerned. They've taken a huge step up with the megapixels in the camera, front facing, HDMI out, and then the high resolution for 720p on video playback. Okay. So I think that it really does come down to personal preference on there. Um, but a lot of people, I, I've had people go with different devices every time someone's walked in. Sure, absolutely. Well, if we can go ahead and launch some of these and just kind of look at the interfaces and dive absolutely. into uh, differences and kind of test so apps give you and whatnot. A, a shot of what we're looking at as far as the screens and are concerned on all these devices. I think something that stands out too is that you look at that Samsung. You look how vibrant that screen is with the Super Amelot Plus, you're going to get the richer colors, the blacker blacks, the whiter whites on this display. It's like a small TV that's on there. Now, is that brightness on the Motorola all the way up, or is that... No, it's actually set to the auto brightness, where okay. because of the light, it's turned down on there. And the same okay. thing with the LG. Now, can we launch like the web browser and uh, take a look at these? I understand that the Bionic isn't connected to the web, but... Yeah, Bionic is, is the only one that's not connected as far as that's concerned, but what we can do is get the three of these guys going on this device, so if I wanted to go with the browser on here. So as far as it's concerned on this guy, so when we're looking at the browser, just your very standard on here, and I have some bookmarks because make it life a little easier when we're trying to do this. I'll go with this. Discovery. So I'm just gonna take it to the Discovery website just because that seems to be one that, that a lot of people like as far as embedded videos on here and what I like too is that it shows the actual desktop version a lot of times under 3G people default to a mobile browser because of the way that the latency works and, and the network so if I want to do something with this I like that it has flash capabilities on all the devices so being able to play the videos on this device if we turn it this way
And again, like we said, this is an actual network that's on here. This isn't something that we brought in specifically for this. Las Vegas was one of our initial market launches. Okay. So this we can see. And you noticed over LTE, think about 3G with video. And this, Not is, only this is actual desktop. flash right here. A absolutely. You know, when you start thinking about this and you say, okay, with 3G, it's got a lot of buffering. Not only does it take a little while to get the actual video started, they would have been buffering by now. Right. Each of these devices, pulling up the desktop browser on here and then going straight into a video is definitely something that is impressive. I think that really shows off the network as far as that's, as far as I'm concerned with this. And we've had multiple devices running the entire time on here. So this is the real thing. This is what customers are gonna experience on the devices. It's gonna look just like this. Now, from a business customer standpoint, um, you know, we know that BlackBerry's kind of handled the business environment in the mm -hmm. past, and mm -hmm. uh, iPhones kind of come in. Do you see one, specifically one of these devices being more business friendly than the other? I noticed they all don't have keyboards, they're all virtual keyboards, which we personally like, but sometimes a business concern. Do you see the HTC taking over, or a Samsung for business, or what's going to be your business phone? As far as that's concerned, I mean, it really does vary because there's a lot of companies that come out and they'll have their own exchange server. So right. as far as the default native client that we have on there, yep. I know based on our company needs, the HTC is, is something that people like on there, but there are okay. third-party applications that people like on this. I know that the HTC is, is really gearing up. And I want to show you something cool as far as just while we're on this video. Okay. Other devices like the HTC Evo has a kickstand, so we have this device. It has the kickstand on there. And it's so, the only one in your lineup that has a kickstand. Correct. correct. So as far as the toys, you know, a business aspect, we love having the security. We love having the capabilities to do business needs on here and moving away from a BlackBerry. But that business person might be traveling, and that business person might want to be able to take this on the plane with them, take it on the road. I travel all the time. I want to be able to have something just like this on this device. The speaker is located right underneath that kickstand on there. So you got to think of that business customer who's on the road, that business customer who's you know on the go with everything. Something as small, a little bit of a quirk just like this, that business customer loves. Not necessarily revolving around security and capabilities, but just peace of mind and, and enjoying the use of the device. Okay. So uh, we still haven't buffered. I mean, this is just still on the devices. It's yeah, just that's, on that's there. impressive. What what type of speeds are are you finding typically with uh, LTE? Uh, well, we didn't run any speed tests on any of these devices, but when I was using my personal device in here, I was getting up towards 17 uh, make download. Wow. And then I was getting up towards 7 on the upload. Wow. Yeah, so it was very impressive as far as uh, as far as being in a true market on there. So. And what's nice is that being backwards capable, you have the devices, people in other areas, even if you don't have this, it's obviously 3G and 1X capable, backwards compatible. All right, that wraps it up for a hands head-to-head uh, -head demo of all the new 4G LTE devices. This is Mike Wilson signing off.